Hey everybody. As many of you know, I've recently teamed up with Miyagi, one of the world's top sound designers, to be able to bring you a four-week online course in synthesis and sound design. What you're about to see is a free full-length preview video from that course, where Miyagi walks you through step-by-step -step how to create a crazy synced lead patch using Native Instruments Massive Synth. If you like what you see in this video, you can check out more information on our course by clicking the link below in the description field of the video. We have more free previews available on the website. I'm stoked for you to check this out because Miyagi has designed sound packs for some of the world's top and most popular synthesizers. So I hope you enjoy this next video. So in this tutorial video, we're gonna look at how to create a nice hard sync lead. And it sounds like this. So nice big sound, lots going on. You'll recognize it from such tunes as Robot Rock by Daft Punk, and it's a type of sound that shows up a lot, and once you know how to program the basics of it, it becomes a very good starting point for lots of other really cool sound design. So here's the patch by itself. Very big tone, and lots of cool stuff going on in it. So let's get stuck in. So the real backbone of the sound is a hard oscillator sync synth. So we're going to use Massive for this, again, just because Massive is a very ubiquitous synth and a lot of people either have it or are familiar with it and can thus translate what I'm doing in Massive to what's applicable for their synth of choice. But really, the thing that you need to know is that in order to pull off a patch like this, you have to be able to control the tuning of the slave oscillator in a sync situation via an envelope. And really, you need a couple envelopes at your disposal. You need one for the amp section, and you also need one, at the very least one, for your oscillator tuning. Now, again, like I explained in our section on oscillator sync, Oscillator sync sometimes shows up in a couple different ways in synthesizers. It can show up as a setting that you can toggle on and off in between a couple oscillators in the oscillator section. So it may be a little switch that says sync in between oscillators one and two or something of the like. And if that's the case, then in order to get this effect, you're going to just be directly controlling the pitch of the slave oscillator of one of the two oscillators in that oscillator section of your synth. Or it may show up like it does in Massive. I'm just dialing up pulse saw sync virtual analog oscillator here. It may show up as a sync knob. And in the case of a sync knob, as I mentioned earlier on, basically that means that what we're dealing with is essentially two oscillators contained within oscillator one here. There's a master and a slave, and we're not hearing the master. The sync knob is controlling the tuning of the slave relative to some unheard master that's underneath this, which is actually taking the input from the keyboard and allowing this oscillator to track the keyboard. So when I depress a key and then sweep the knob, you can hear that really nice sync effect that we want, but we're not hearing the master oscillator at all. We're actually just hearing the slave oscillator and the sync knob controlling its tuning. Its cycle is still being reset by that master, and so we're still getting the, the effect that we want. It's still tracking the keyboard, and it's still going to stay in tune. But the extra harmonic content is being generated by this single sync knob. So it, your, your sync settings are either going to be controlled through a knob like this, and it may say sync, or it may say sync amount, or it may say... Uh, sync ratio or something of the like. Or your sync settings may be controlled via directly controlling the pitch of one of those two oscillators if you have a toggle switch. So to start with, I'm just going to deactivate these two oscillators here just so that we've got this single oscillator going. And I've got my sync setting all the way down. So we're just hearing the direct output of this oscillator without its cycle being reset at all according to the master. And there's a couple other little quick things that I'm going to do just to set this patch up. I'm going to adjust the voicing a little bit. This type of sound is really rooted in 70s funk and prog rock. And a lot of the time, if a 
if this type of sound is created in modern dance music, it's designed to kind of emulate that sound. So at that point in time, most of the synths that would have been gigged by prog rock bands or funk bands would have been either the Mini Moog or something similar to the Mini Moog. So it would have been a monophonic synth. So we're going to switch it over to monophonic in the voicing section. I also do want to set my synth to legato triller just so that when I depress a key and then another key, it flips back to the first. So like so. And I then want to quickly adjust my amp envelope here. So in this case, it's envelope four. And I'm just going to get rid of the attack and I'm going to bring the sustain all the way up so that we have, again, a simple toggle envelope and on off envelope. And I am going to play around with the release setting a little bit later on, but for right now, that is going to be good. Those are the basics of setting up this patch. The next step is going to be applying an envelope to the sync amount. So let's start off with envelope three here, and I'm just going to bring it over and drop it into the, the sync mod slot there. And I'm just going to bring a little bit up and we're going to start looking for some sweet spots. So you can hear right there that our envelope is causing our slave oscillator to jump up in pitch and then back down so that we get a nice sync sweep. But it's not doing what we want. It's just going down. We want to get a nice kind of wow effect. So that means that we're going to need to start playing with the attack a little bit. So... Okay, that's sounding good. And I think I want to bring the decay out a little bit and the sustain down a little bit so that we get a bit more of a pronounced wow. A little bit more attack. And let's try a little bit more of that envelope. Okay, that's sounding good as a very basic starting point here. Now I'm just going to adjust the actual wavetable position here. I'm going to flip it over to pulse wave. And that's giving me a little bit more of what I want. I want that kind of nice nasal hollow sound. So let's just try playing that a couple octaves up and down. <laughs> So that's already uh, a pretty nice sound. It's got a lot of character, and it's definitely going to jump out of the speakers a fair amount. I want to play around now with a little bit of a, a sweet spot in the interaction between envelopes three and four. As I mentioned, I do want to play around with the release setting of my amp envelope, so I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. A little bit more. Okay, now I want to play with the release on envelope 3 so that as I release the key, we still get a little bit of that sync sweep following the tail of the amp envelope's release. So as I bring this out, we'll start hearing the sync envelope take its effect over the course of its cycle, so it'll jump up and then back down. And then when I release the key, it's still going to continue a little bit of downward motion, so we still get a little bit of harmonic movement as the envelope finishes its its cycle here. So. So the next step is going to be to add a little bit of glide. It's not going to be a lot. It's just going to allow for some extra funk in the patch here. So let's bring it up a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, that's sounding quite good. So now we're going to look for a little bit of fatness to come from a second oscillator here. And I'm going to go again for a synced oscillator. So it's the same waveform as before. It's our virtual analog saw pulse sync. And I'm going to bring it up, not quite as much in the mix. 
And I'm going to start off by dropping it down an octave just to see if I can get the kind of result that I want from a little bit of a lower tone. And let's just hear how that sounds. Okay. So that's balancing out quite nicely already. Just adding a little bit in the lower range there. And I'm going to take envelope three and I'm going to apply it to the sync mount again, but I'm not going to go as high this time. So we're going to get a similar type of motion as what we have in oscillator one, but not to the same extent. And because it's dropped down an octave and the envelope is controlling the sync amount a little bit less, we're just going to get a little bit of a different motion with that oscillator compared to what we have with oscillator one. And the, that type of routing where you take one mod source and route it to two different oscillators to different amounts gives a similar kind of effect as to what you get from detuning or phasing in that you have similar motions, but they're slightly off from each other. And so it'll create interesting effects as the oscillators go through their mod cycles. So let's listen to that. Let's try bringing that up more. You can hear a huge amount there. And we're just going to leave it down lower there. So now I'm going to be looking for a little bit of grit. And in order to do that, I'm going to utilize our filters and the different routing options that we have here in Massive. So I'm going to use insert one, and I'm going to use the parabolic shaper, which I've just got dialed up here. And in order to get the grit that I want, I'm going to take oscillator two and route it through filter two, which is now in parallel. And insert one is going to be affecting the flow as the audio passes through this filter two routing. So you can hear a good amount of distortion there. It might actually be a little bit too much. So I'm just going to route that back over to filter one a little bit. And I'm going to bring a little bit of oscillator one over so it's getting passed through that first insert there as well. Okay, I'm liking how that's sounding for now.